The Fatec Vlog Pocket is a lightweight budget smartphone gimbal that has a lot of great features for its price, but it does fall short in others. I'm Lofi, let's talk. I bought the Fatec Vlog Pocket as a semi-impulse purchase because they were going for pretty cheap at my workplace. And I gotta say, it's a lot better than what my expectations for it were. But the budget side of it does show itself in some critical areas. This has also been my very first gimbal, so I don't have a lot of experience to compare it to. But I have looked around at the market and see what other offerings are out there. So I have a decent idea of the offerings. Let's open the box. So just by the size of the box, you can already tell that it's going to be a really small package. And once we take the lid off, we'll get our first look at the stuff that comes with the box. So inside we have our accessories, which include a nice, surprisingly nice fabric carrying pouch. And you can see from the size of the pouch that this thing is small. Then you have your mini tripod for it with a standard quarter inch screw on the top. Your micro USB charging cable, which is a 50 centimeter cable. And then the gimbal itself. So you could see the tiny footprint of this thing. And then if you are looking for the paperwork, they are under the foam cover. So here you can see them. Including a quick start guide, which is pretty essential so you know what's going on. But then again, you're watching this video and I'm gonna go over them, so. So let's get rid of the accessories the travel pouch and the cable. We don't need those anymore. So as you can see, you can lock the gimbal itself into this tiny package. And the size is so small that as the name implies, you can actually fit this into your pocket. I've done it. It's clunky. You wouldn't want to keep something like this in your pocket, but you can definitely pocket it if you have like normal size pockets. That's a lot of pockets. It is made out of plastic, which is a sturdy kind of plastic, but plastic nonetheless. But the plastic material does allow its light weight, which is actually 270 grams or 0.6 pounds. When it's folded, it is 4.27 inches by 5.73 inches. So 11 centimeters by 14.6 centimeters. So really compact, like I said before. So you open it by opening this locking screw on the main arm, and then you just fold it open. And that will get us a proper look at the controls of the gimbal. So in the front, you have two buttons. On the back, you have a trigger. And on the left side, you have your micro USB charging port. Now, yes, it is micro USB, but that port will charge the gimbal's 1300 milliamp hour battery in two hours. And that battery does give it a running time of eight hours in use or 14 hours in standby. On the bottom of the gimbal, you have your quarter inch screw hole. So you can use any accessories you might already have, or you can use a tripod itself. To start using the gimbal, you physically open the three axes from their locks by just turning each one. And then you take your smartphone and simply place it in the holder on one side and you stretch the holder to get your phone in. If you want the tripod, just screw it in and open it up. Now, Fayetech says that the gimbal supports up to a seven inch phone with a width range of the holder being 42 millimeters to 88 millimeters with a max payload of 0.53 pounds or 240 grams. 
So my 6.7 inch OnePlus 7 Pro here is really at the max size. Another thing you might want to note is that the holder will not hold a super thick phone securely. So if I have my really thick protective case on my phone, you can see that it's barely holding on. I mean, that looks like it's hanging on by its fingernails. So when you have your phone set up, you want to keep it in its proper position when you go turn the gimbal on. Then just hold the top button for a second and there you go. So once you have it on, a single click on the power button will change between a pan mode and a locked mode. And a double click will switch between landscape and portrait, which is very cool. The lower button will act as your shutter button or double clicking it will change from photo to video. The trigger on the back will allow for several uses. By holding down the trigger, you can now change the orientation of the phone to what you want. If you don't hold it down, it will attempt to keep it where it was that you left it. Double pressing the trigger will reset the adjustments to default. As you can see, a lot of the use from this gimbal can be gotten without the need to use the app. Thankfully, because the app is where I start having my problems. So the app that you need is Feiyu On. It's available on Android and iOS. So here you can see the app. And no, that's not lag or anything. This is the Gimbal Apps Landscape Mode. Other than that, the problem is it's not too clear about anything. Sure, you have your photo to video toggle, your shutter button, like any other camera app. But after that is where the app falls apart. So the icon to the left of the shutter is your mode switch. Which, sure, that's fine. But then, if I want to access my settings, do I use this strange toggle thing here? Or the usual cog icon on the right side? And what's the gimbal icon? And what does the Feiyutech icon do? None of these are clear. Sure, you can try them out and find out, but that isn't the point. It's not a good user experience. Speaking of the settings of the app, the video resolution is where you adjust not just the resolution, but also the FPS. And regardless of your phone's abilities, you don't have access to 60 frames per second at all. No 4K 60 or 1080p 60. Instead, what you have is 1080p 30 frames per second, 4K 30 frames per second, 1080p 240 frames per second, and 720p 480 frames per second. Why? Who is going to use 720p 480 frames per second, but not the 60 frames per second options? Who? Why? Why is this a thing? Other than that, you do have options for things like a dolly zoom, time lapses and slow-mo videos, which are pretty well explained when you choose them. Same with the photo options for panoramas, but then you also have the options to stream live straight to Kwai Show Live, one of China's top live streaming platforms. So if you've always dreamed of becoming a top tier streamer in China, now you can. Moving on to the other features of the app, there is a remote control for the gimbal. As opposed to Logic, it isn't in the picture of a gimbal on the corner, but on the cog above it. And credit where credit is due, this is a rather nice feature. If you have another smart device to connect, you can use that to get the exact movement you want. Also, it really bothers me how there is an inconsistency within the app. Like, in some windows, to go back to where you were, there is a specific button for it, and in some windows you use your phone's back button. And in those windows where there's a specific button for it, if you press the back button, you close the app. And you remember what happens when you close the app? There goes your settings. One thing that does come only by using the app is the tracking feature, and it's half decent. You just choose your target in the app by drawing a box on it, and the gimbal will try to stay on that target. The problem is, the tracking is so slow that even with pretty slow movements, 
Gimbal is playing catch up the whole time. Now, let's go outside and give this gimbal a run for its money with some good old vlogging. So here is the vlogging test for the Feiyu Vlog Pocket gimbal. You can see the stabilization as I'm walking normally here in this park. I've never done this before, so uh, I have no idea how this looks. Also, the audio is from my phone's microphone because I was not able to use my own because the camera software wouldn't let me. You can see that it's trying to keep up with me, but it's really struggling, especially if I do a fast turn. But surprisingly, this is better. This is my OnePlus phone's standard camera app. So let's switch to the Feiyu one now. So now we're recording on the Feiyu app and it's trying to keep me in the frame. It's actually almost doing a good job unless I try to pan the gimbal itself. It is pretty far behind. Also, it really doesn't want to keep me in the center of the frame. But that's, it is what it is. But this is how it looks on the Feiyu app. There is a slight difference. There's slight, a slight difference on the usability as well. So here you go. So now we're trying to see the stabilization in use when you use the rear cameras for some other stuff. Whether or not you can actually shoot B-roll is the question here. And as you can see, it does do a pretty good job at stabilizing that. I'm turning this gimbal around and round. You shouldn't, but this is a test, so. Now unlocking it, it'll pan again. Unlocking it. It will not move. Not bad. And now we're in 4K60 because the Feiyu app can't do can't do that, so we had to change our resolution uh, our app to get this 4K60 going. You can see the stabilization in 60 is very very good. The camera quality on the OnePlus is not. So what do I think of the gimbal all in all? The size is really great and it's easy to take with you. You can carry this in your camera bag or your backpack with no issues. You won't even notice it's there. It does do its job pretty well as long as you never open the app. And for 69 euros, it's not bad. It's okay. For 69 euros and about the same in dollars, this gimbal is the perfect example of how you can make pretty good hardware and then completely screw it up with bad software. So for this price, I would probably recommend something like the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, which as I looked around, it is around the same price and just seems to be a better version of this in every way. Anyway, I'll link both this and the Osmo in the description. So if you wanna check them out, you can. Those will be affiliate links, so keep that in mind. But overall, if you like this video, uh, give it that good old thumbs up. And if you dislike the video, well, how about a joke? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think so. So anyway, I'm Lofa. This has been fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.